Just another horrible jobs report. What's the big deal? Sniffy Joe's got is in at hel- at the helm. He'll take care of everything. Remember they said that uh, low employment would lead to uh, high inflation. Yeah. And I said, well, how do you argue Japan? And then they'll say, well, look at now. Now we have high inflation. Well, we've had a low employment in the United States, and we didn't have high inflation. And then they'll say government printing will lead to high inflation. And I said, look at Japan. Look at the United States. We had low un- unemployment, high government printing, and yet low inflation. The same thing happened in Japan. Now we have high inflation, but we have a horrible jobs report that came down the pike which would not include to be inflationary in terms of the overall economy. The reason we have high inflation is because Bo Jiden's stupid energy prices. But anyway, let's just read. It's, anyway, the whole point is no one knows anything, man. I, I just, the only person who knows is you talk to these clients the other day and they're le- le- leaving from California. They're figuring out where to go, Nevada, uh, Idaho, something like that. Anyway, or Arizona. Uh, and they have some neighbors that moved from uh, California to Nevada and they kept their, uh, <laughs> Uh, the, the, they kept their liberal voting policies with them. And the neighbors like, why'd you move here? Well, they told the neighbors like, why? I don't get it because California should be a, you know, freaking the Mecca for liberal policies. And they said, well, we don't like the high taxes either. So everyone is conservative, what they know, what they know about. And so you are conservative, what you know about, and you can see with your own eyes, you say there wasn't high inflation until Sniffy Joe's high energy prices, high energy policies. You know that, you know, there wasn't high inflation on food, on all this other stuff until Obama got involved in Obamacare. We know that. There wasn't high inflation on health care. There wasn't high inflation on tuition until Hillary Clinton got involved in the government funding of uh, student loans. We You know that with your own eyes. Everything else wasn't high inflationary. We know that. There wasn't high inflation for the price of homes until they started man- mandating all this other crap and put zoning regulations on, and then you see high inflation. All that's because the government policies, man, it has nothing to do with government spending, it has to do with the freaking government policies. I tell you, unemployment, low unemployment is supposed to lead directly causation with high inflation, and yet that hasn't happened. They're, it's like CO2 and temperature. They're not one and the same. They're not. So anyway, let's dive into this real quick because this is so frustrating. November unemployment report, non-farm payrolls increased by $210,000. Wow, that's great, 210,000 jobs, that's great. Well below the consensus of $550,000. Payroll gains for September and October were revived up by 82,000, bringing the net of 292,000 well below consensus of 550. The unemployment rate dropped to 4.2%. That's got to be high inflationary, right? Well, what's the unemployment rate in Japan? It ain't nothing. I'll show you in a second. That isn't inflationary. Low unemployment is not, uh, there's no causation between low unemployment and high inflation. It's stupid, man. I'm sick of this crap. Because everyone says, well, we got low unemployment. That means inflation. We got government spending. That means inflation. I'm like, the freaking look this in front of your very eyes. If you see it, it's all based on cheap energy. Uh, don't get bent out of shape by headlines showing a slowdown in payroll growth. Uh, why? There's been a significant slowdown in payroll growth. I mean, look, slow, slow down, payroll growth. Look at that. Um, that's not the slowdown of payroll growth. Where's the payroll growth? I'm not sure. Anyway, this might be the unemployment. Eh, what is that? Civilian unemployment rate right there. Yep, 16 years. All right, so uh, yes, non-farm, non-farm payrolls grew by only 210,000, the slowest pace so far this year. Uh, however, there are several reasons why this number should be taken with a grain of salt. First, civilian employment, alternative measure of jobs, includes small business startups, increased 1.136 million uh, in November, the fastest pace in more than a year. Yeah, I wonder why that is. I wonder why that is. Because people aren't taking the, the freaking Maxine Waters. And they're saying, I'm going to start my own business, which is great. They're saying, I'm freeing myself from the corporate shenanigans of m- mandating experimental treatments. So that's good. I'm all about it. However, at the end of the day, the headline report is 210,000 jobs, well below consensus. That's what the headline is. I love Brian Westbury. I just think he's a very optimistic guy. And that, look, I get it 100%. I, I 100% agree that optimism in America is better than negativity or pessimism. But let's be real. Yeah, the, the non-farm payrolls only grew by 210. Was anyone citing that you, the last just two days ago that non-farm payrolls, you shouldn't get too upset about if it comes low because we have significant small business startups, especially we know the vast majority is going to fail. 
Uh, second, the number of hours worked in the private sector increased by 0.5%, largely due to an increase in hours per worker because there's less workers. If the increase in total hours had been achieved by only hiring more workers, then, then having the average worker work more hours, the payroll gain would have been about 570000 uh, Who is it said, I want to, let me look. Here's Harry Truman. Give me a one-handed economist. All my economists say on one hand, but on the other hand. Yeah, exactly. So here it is. If, first, Brian, if the increase in total hours had been achieved by hiring more workers, we would have been consensus. But it wasn't achieved by hiring more workers. It wasn't. That's the whole point. Yes, if this would have happened, that would be the result. But it didn't, Brian. Did Brian Westford, the guy who wrote this article. I, I just, it drives me up the wall. So yeah, 100%. If the sun shone all the time, and we got 270 watts per square meter, we could probably live off solar. It doesn't happen like that. If we had battery packs that could freaking store electricity, we could live off solar. We don't. I, I don't get, I mean, I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, but actually what this would tell me, the number of hours work, worked in the private sector increased by 0.5, which means you're putting more burden on the people who are working. What does that mean? There has to be more of the same falling out of the workforce. I don't want to carry the burden. I think about these nurses, 30% of the nursing staff gets laid off because they don't want to take the Maxine Waters. And next thing you know, you're like, oh yeah, but now we got 60 hours per nurses. They're even more productive. And they're like, I'm dying here. Upward revisions to prior months added 82,000 with all that adjustment, uh, what's the net? Okay, fourth, the labor force participation rate, uh, ro both rose to the highest level so far in the recovery to 61.8% and 59.2.2%. Okay, in the recovery, wow, that's still worse than it's ever been. Uh, other than the freaking pandemic. Last, uh, wage gains continued with earnings uh, up 0.3% and 4.8% the whole year. Great. So you're up 5% in earnings. That's great. I, 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 I'm i glad to see that. But let's not sugarcoat the headline numbers, which is significantly below consensus, about a third. Uh, let's see. Uh, coming, combining hourly pay and the number of hours worked. And see, this is the thing. The number of hours worked... It, <laughs> People don't want to work 50 and 60 hour weeks, Brian, in some crappy old job. Just because your economist data says that's a good thing for the, the real, I'm thinking about a nurse here. That's not a good thing for that nurse. That's a bad thing. Uh, the number of hours worked uh, and pay has increased 9.4% the past year. All right. This is important because it means that growth in total worker pay has roughly kept pace with inflation. Uh, don't be surprised as payroll report is revived up for the next two months while the pace of job growth picks up in a few future months as well. All right. Uh, payrolls remain 4 million below where they were in February 2020. <laughs> the labor force is 2.4 million below pre-COVID levels. I, assuming OSHA rules aren't resurrected and new burdensome rules and restrictions aren't imposed, the labor market should continue to heal. And that's a lot of assumptions there. I, I want to pull you something else. This is the stupidest thing in the history of mankind. It's called the Phillips curve. The Phillips curve is a graphical representation of the short-term relationship between unemployment and inflation within an economy. According to the Phillips curve, there exists a negative correlation or negative relationship between the unemployment rate and inflation in an economy. So we have low unemployment, we have high inflation. And now the Phillips curve proponents say, see, right now this is what's happening. And then I say, okay, well, how do we have low inflation and low unemployment for the years and years and years previous to this? And how do you explain Japan? You can't. So it's just stupid. But the economists say this proves the Phillips curve is valid. No, it does not. This completely does the exact opposite. It has not, there's no correlation, no relationship whatsoever. I, I just, yet yeah, this is what people are going to say. Look, inflation is through the roof because the unemployment rate is going down. Uh, right here. Here's the Phillips guy. I didn't even know that's his first name. New Zealand-born British economist published an article. <laughs> look, look at how silly this is. Published an article titled, The Relationship Between Unemployment and the Rate of Change Money Wages in the UK from 1861 to 1957. Uh, in the article, Phillips showed a negative correlation between the rate of unemployment and the rate of inflation, the years of high unemployment, and showed low inflation, and so on. Uh, right here, in AER, the American Economic, Economic Review, Paul Samuelson, huh, interesting, uh, who won the Nobel Prize at MIT, and also said in 1989, that the Soviet Union's co command co economy was, was going to be ours in a matter of years. And that was when the Soviet Union fell. Uh, published an article titled, An 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 Out Analytics of Anti-Inflation Policy. This article, too, reported a negative correlation between inflation and unemployment. Subsequently, readers from other countries also found that uh, Phillips' curve extended beyond the country of the economy of the UK. Samuels and, and Saul named the relationship after Phillips. Uh, 
right here. And George Akerlof, his Nobel Prize, said probably the most single important macro macroeconomic relationship is the Phillips curve. This is how bad the profession of economics is. It's freaking nuts, man. You know your stuff more than the macro clowns. I cannot stand macroeconomics because it's so fraudulent. It's so fraudulent. But it's, it's even worse because the economists all want to be, they have physics envy. Look at us like scientists. That's why I have all these fat, fancy schmancy equations and graphs and stuff. Even Tom Sowell says, man, the only reason they did this is because they're so, they want so badly to be taken serious as opposed to a social science as a hard science. There's no, no, no hard science economy, economics. Ah, all right, we'll see. I love your thoughts. We'll see you.